In this chapter, we'll look at how to solve quadratic equations. There are several ways to solve quadratic equations, but first of all, we need to understand that quadratic equations have an exponent of 2 as the highest exponent that we'll see. Standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. We talked a little bit about standard form earlier in this course. Um, the x squared has to come first, and then the x, and then the number, and it has to equal 0. Quadratic equations have two solutions, so we'll always be looking for two solutions. In this section, 12.1, we'll solve quadratic equations using square roots. In 12.2, we'll solve quadratic equations using factoring. And in 12.3, we'll solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. 12.4, we'll look at how to graph quadratic equations. If a quadratic equation has no middle term, then solving by square roots works really well. You first get the item that is being squared by itself. Then you take the positive and negative square roots of both sides to find two answers. Here x squared is being squared and it's already by itself. So we'll take the square root and the positive and negative square root and that gives us two answers. Over here, the squared and the square root cancels each other out. We talked about that in the last module. And on the right-hand side, we need to simplify 1 12. So we'll divide by 2 because it's even. And that gives us 56. And then we'll divide that by 2 because it's also even. And that gives us 28. 28 is even, so we'll divide that by 2, and we get 14. 14 is even, so we'll divide that by 2, and we get 7. 7 is prime, so we're finished. So we have positive and negative. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. We're looking for pairs of numbers. So this will come out as a 2, and this will come out as a 2. And then we end up with positive and negative 4 square root of 7. Now this is really two answers. This is a positive 4 square root of 7 and a negative 4 square root of 7. And that's how we'll enter it into your homework. Now in this problem, we don't have the x squared by itself. There's a 2 in front. So before we start, we need to divide both sides by 2. And that cancels that out, and then that leaves us x squared equals 9. Then we'll take the square root, positive and negative square root. Over here it cancels out, leaving us x. And on the right hand side, square root of 9 is 3 because we would have 3 times 3 inside. This group of 2 comes out as a 3. So we get positive and negative 3. And again, that's really two answers. x is equal to positive 3, and x is equal to negative 3. In this problem, again, we don't have the y squared by itself. So we need to start by adding 256 to both sides. Then that gives us y squared equals 256. We need to take the square root, positive and negative square root. And that cancels out over here and leaves us with y. And then we need to deal with this 256. It can be divided by 2 because it's even. And that gives us 128. 128 can be divided by 2 because it is even. 64 can be divided by 2, and then 32 can be divided by 2, 16 can be divided by 2, 4 can be divided by 2, and now I am finally finished. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 twos. So 
So if I look for groups of twos, two twos, groups of two twos, I end up with four groups. And if I multiply those together, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So I get y is 16 and negative 16. This problem looks a little different, but it works much the same way. Here we have x plus 6 that's being squared. There's nothing else on that side of the equal sign, so we don't need to do anything. We're ready to take a square root. So we'll take a positive and negative square root of 4 equals the square root of x plus 6 squared. And again, on the right, well this time it's on the right, but the square root and the squared cancels each other out and leaves us with just x plus 6. On the left, that ends up square root of 4 is 2. Again, we don't write that square root because we've taken the square root of it. And it's a positive and negative. Now, because this doesn't have x by itself already, we need to write two equations. We need to write x plus 6 equals a positive 2 and x plus 6 equals the negative 2. That's this plus and minus 2 right here. It gives us two problems. So up here we'll subtract 6 from both sides. And that gives us with x equals negative 4 as one answer. Down here we'll subtract 6 from both sides. And that gives us x equals negative 8 as our other answer. In this problem, the squared is already by itself, so we'll just take the square root of both sides, positive and negative. And this is like the last chapter we did. If you remember, this just means we take a square root of the top and the bottom separately. We can't take a square root of 7, so we just leave it underneath the square root. But the square root of 36 is 6, so it comes out. So we get our two answers, square root of 7 over 6 and negative square root of 7 over 6. This again is a little bit like example 5. Um, the part that's being squared is already by itself, so we're ready to take a square root of both sides. We want to put our plus and minus in front of this square root. Over here it cancels out and it leaves us with 9x minus 2. Over here we need to say the square root of 64 is 8 and it's a plus and minus. Now again remember that means because x isn't by itself yet I have to write two equations. So I have 9x minus 2 equals 8 and then 9x minus 2 equals negative 8. So we'll solve one first. We'll add 2 to both sides. And that gives us 9x equals 10. And then I'll divide both sides by 9. And that gives me x equals 10 ninths. So there's one answer. I'll repeat the steps over here. We'll add 2 to both sides. And that gives me 9x equals a negative 6. And then we'll divide both sides by 9. And here, this doesn't divide evenly, so we want to reduce it as a fraction. Divide both the top and the bottom by 3, and we get negative 2 thirds. Um, so notice you do have two answers. They don't. They sometimes, actually quite often, aren't really the same number. They're two different numbers. The other thing I would really suggest is that you work one whole problem first before you do the other one so that you're really paying attention to your numbers and you're not just um, copying the two sides the same.